I was scrolling through eBay one evening when I came across a listing that stood out to me. It was an Adept, who's since rebranded to Omron, 550 Scara robot arm that I was able to bargain down to $80 for, plus shipping, which was a pretty good deal. So I decided to jump into it and figure it out as I go along. I mean, yeah, I was missing the controller, the amplifier, a teach pendant, the power and control cables, and any idea of what I was doing, but I decided to jump into it. The first thing I noticed were some broken plastic covers and a bent Z-axis framing, but I couldn't help but to continue taking it apart. So I went back to eBay to look for parts when I came across a certain listing that stood out to me. So there's this guy up in New York that has barns full of used robot arms that used to work at the Kodak plant back in the day programming their factories to automate the process of disposable camera production. Cool coincidence, this is actually the same Kodak plant that Smarter Every Day made a documentary on, which was great, literally a week after I went up there to visit him, who then worked on one of Google's cameras that went into space, who now works for a defense company that works alongside the United States government. Wait, you don't believe me? Well, He's right here. I can't show you because of the nature of his work. He keeps a near invisible online presence. This guy basically just buys, repairs, and sells robot parts. And that's how I found him through eBay. After some talking back and forth, he didn't want to charge me for the parts. In fact, he decided to give me everything I needed to get it started, as well as another robot arm. Which I am really thankful for if you're watching. That made a huge impact on me and opened the doors to a lot of opportunities. I couldn't have done this without you, so thank you. First things first, let's figure out how and where to put them. So I got them all powered up, but then they wouldn't run. Turns out the eBay robot, which I nicknamed Wally, wasn't exactly in running condition. I kept blowing this two amp fuse in one of the joint interface boards every time I tried to calibrate Wally. So to troubleshoot, instead of replacing the fuse, I ran some thin wires out to the outside of the housing of the control box and plugged in this other two amp fuse I got off Amazon and turned it on. Though the only issue was that the wire I ran was smaller than the fuse and so it caught on fire <laughs> as soon as I turned it on. Guess I should have made sure the wire was big enough even though it looked big enough. But with the help of my friend in New York, we did it the proper way and ran some bigger wires outside of the housing and I bought a fuse holder with a bunch of replacement two out fuses and unplugged everything on the low voltage side of the robot and slowly plugged things in until the fuse popped. And I did this over and over until I narrowed it down to this frayed wire for the Z-axis home sensor. Which explains why the fuse wasn't blowing until later on in the calibration. So my friend in New York sent over some parts to help me out and I replaced them. I recalibrated the Z-axis home sensor and now while he's working again. I really took my time to test the robots and get familiar with them as I wanted to hop into some pretty complicated projects. These robots may be 30 years old, but they're just as capable of a modern day robot, only limited by the software. My only limitation is I never figured out how to run both robots at the same time. I think I need a second processor to do that, but for now, for what I'm planning to do with them, running one after the other will work just as good. 
So I wanted to give my sponsor a chance to answer some questions and sort of introduce himself as the least I could do to show my appreciation. But he declined the interview because at his real work he deals with secret classified projects with the government who doesn't even have any social media. But I've been keeping in contact with him and this was his response to one of the progress updates I sent him. That is great. Glad they're running and apparently you're learning. I have former co-workers that are getting pulled out of retirement because of the shortage of skilled automation workers. You should have a good career ahead. Never stop learning and keep up with the technology to stay relevant. Hard to do, it moves forward so fast. My favorite thing to do in the industry is to mold the old with the new. Saves money time, operators are familiar with the old, less risk. Anybody can come in and wholesale price and production line, but to keep the good of the old and replace or upgrade the troubled operations and make them all work together faster, better, take something special. A real understanding of old systems and new. All this really gave me a lot of inspiration, as I hope it does to you too. Really, I can't say thank you enough. I actually just finished a huge project with these robots and I wanted to put this part in the video but I didn't want this to really get overlooked. I wanted to get this its own video where I could really show my appreciation without that part getting overlooked in a bigger video. I'm actually editing the video right now and it's one of the most elaborate, complicated, difficult projects, at least one of, that I've ever worked on. And if you enjoy watching robots, definitely keep your eye out for that video.